Well, let's speak to Alan Mendoza, Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society, with more on this. Um, afternoon to you, Alan. Uh, straight questions to start with. Julian Assange, is he a good guy or a bad guy? Well, in a sense, it doesn't really matter what kind of guy he is. We're not debating what kind of guy he is. We're debating whether he should stand trial for a crime he's been accused of committing. And whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, you need to face trial if that's what's happened. And we're going through the processes of exhausting legal appeals to get to that point. And at the end of that, we will then work out if he's a good guy or a bad guy, won't, he? won't we? Yeah, I, I guess with cases such as this, uh, the difficulty is, and which is what I imagine his supporters would argue, uh, is that once you're you're put into the the system for a trial, uh, you ain't seen again, not in any real way, because you know even if you're able to waylay certain proceedings, you can spend years, even decades, just waiting for the next hearing or the next appeal. These cases seem to be uh, hugely complex, and the support base of Mr. Assange seems to argue that actually this should never be in in front of a court. Um, Everything he's done, he's transparent about. It's there for all to see. He hasn't broken any laws. How do you sense that uh, that riposte that we hear from his supporters? Well, there are many people who believe that uh, people they support haven't committed any crimes. You know, that, that happens all the time. The, oh, that person didn't do this, or they're extenuating circumstances for why they stole or why they did that. We hear this on a constant basis, and the correct way to deal with it once... Um, uh, an extradition request has come is to allow the process to continue and to argue it in court. Mm. Uh, it is, you know, crazy to think that uh, just because people think he isn't uh, guilty or shouldn't, um, you know, be facing a trial, that he therefore shouldn't face a trial. That's clearly against the principles of all uh, natural justice. Yeah, I, well, I would have thought so too. And not to take any sides about this, I come at this from a fairly naive perspective. I've always been slightly confused by Mr Assange and um, the sort of ever-growing body of... Um, well, the, the ever-growing story around him and what he's purported to have done, what he might do next, etc. But, I mean, if this is somebody... You know, one of the, the things we do know about, that he was um, accused of leaking information, that uh, civilians were... Uh, unarmed civilians were targeted in Iraq by the Americans, uh, hugely embarrassing for the Americans, blah, blah, blah. Even if that is the case and transpired to be the case, I, I guess the Americans and many others would say, well, even if he's right on that, it's not his position to sing like a canary. He doesn't have the right. He signed all the relevant documents to say... Uh, the, or people in those departments sign all the relevant documents, and it's not for him to suddenly start spouting information out without any context. Is, is that fair, that defence? Well, the, the, whole, the whole issue, I'm not sure it's a, a defence per se. If the Americans did wrong things in Iraq, as we know they did, they should face the consequences for that. And that's happened several times, as we know already. But the issue here is more fundamental. It is that what Assange did was put in danger the lives of um, Afghan uh, people who provide assistance to the West in Afghanistan, people whose if identities were known were therefore in danger of being killed by the Taliban or by others for having uh, been, you know, sort of uh, conspiring with the West, as it were. He put those people's names into the public domain uh, on his site, and that is, of course, one of the reasons he has been picked up uh, many years later. The idea is that, look, you can't do things like that. The, the purpose of classification is to also preserve the identities of uh, people who are helping your, you know, the, sort of the forces there. And by revealing that, you place their life in danger. And we obviously don't know the extent of what happened as a result, but given their names were all made public uh, and given the Taliban would have known quite clearly who they were, yeah. this is, you know, an obvious sort of penalty they would have faced. Well, you'd think so, but, but had he specifically signed up to anything saying, I will not talk about this, or was he the no, no, sort no. of... Th he was the third-hand recipient of that information, right? Correct, and that's part of this issue as well. A lot of people are saying, oh, this is a journalistic... Um, point, and he should be allowed as a journalist to put this out. But Julian Assange has never described himself as a, as a journalist. He has always described himself as an activist and a campaigner. And he is not the New York Times. He's not the Guardian. He's not this. He's not that. He had a, a politically uh, minded project called WikiLeaks, which, let's not forget, specialised only in revealing things 
from certain governments. They said yeah. nothing about what was going on in the Kremlin, nothing about what was going on in China, none of those things. He had a, there was a clear political bias in what he was doing. He wasn't a journalist. He was an activist. And he's being mm. picked up not because uh, of the, you know, what he did, but because of how he did it in the way that, that he was part of this conspiracy to hack documents. True. The, yes, true. And, and, and encouraging others, uh, tacitly or otherwise, to, to you know, here's, here's an open email address. Just drop in what you know, boys, and, and we'll let it be known. I, I'm, I'm sure there's an offence in that in itself. But if I were to well, it's stumble... More than that, he was, the, 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 the actual allegations are that he conspired with Chelsea Manning. That's of the course, whole point. So it wasn't, it wasn't random, just drop it in. It was like, oh, do this and put it, send it here. Yeah. So he was, he was sort of, uh, some would say, up to his neck in it, but he was certainly intrinsically connected to the system. He was hardly a distant sort of character who was just hearing tittle-tattle and letting it be known. That said... Just because he didn't talk about China, just because he didn't talk about Russia, doesn't mean that he's... I mean, he may well be political. That's not illegal. We're not North Korea. You're allowed to be political. You're allowed to be an activist. If I were to sit here and say, I've had, heard on good authority the Americans targeted unarmed civilians during the Iraq war, nobody would be asking for my extradition. Um, no, but if you hacked a US uh, government computer or were, you know, in a conspiracy to do so, then they might actually. And that's that's a, a slightly different process. If you if you said it, if he said it, that's not a crime per se. It, but you know, if the the mode of uh, obtaining the evidence turns out to be illegal, then that's a problematic um, path in itself. Because if it isn't, then what's to stop anyone else from leaking any yeah. material they want? And without any form of secrecy, how can governments get on with doing their work? Again, I'm not for a moment defending bad action. If bad action happens, people need to be, uh, you know, taken to responsibility for it. But if you don't have any secrecy at all, then you cannot have any ability to uh, run any operations. And Should... that's an obvious point. Yeah, of course. Just finally, Alan, what is your, your gut telling you on this? What might, what might happen over the next couple of days in the High Court? Well, obviously, that's for the courts to decide. And, you know, I've always stated on this, you know, I'm a fan of British justice. If the British justice system decides that um, his legal case uh, for staying here is weak and it's decided that he must be extradited, then I'm fully in favour of that. And if it decides the, to the contrary, I'm fully in favour of that as well, because I believe that this justice system here is impartial. It's not being sat upon by any foreign governments. It will look at the evidence presented to it and it will make a decision as to whether there is a case or not to answer.